direction switches. We have the typical changeover switch. We have a double pull, double throw toggle switch. And then we have this big triple pull, double throw rotary switch. And let me tell you, size matters. Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. For most people, when wiring up a direction switch for their treadmill motor, the simple toggle switch is sufficient. You only need to do the crossover wires, have the power coming in on the crossover legs and going out on the middle, or the power coming in on the middle and going out on the crossover legs. It's a simple way to change the polarity of the power going into the motor, and it's a great way to reverse direction. But what if you want to do something more? What if, instead of a toggle switch, you want a rotary switch? Well, here we have a changeover switch, and the problem with it is when it's on one direction, you get continuity across the terminals here and no continuity here. But when you go the other direction, you get continuity here and not any there. Now, there are ways to wire that to get around that, but it's not really a double throw switch. And it's the double throw switch action that allows you to change directions. Now, again, you can wire this, you can put hard jumpers, and then effectively, depending on how you hook it up, you do have a double throw switch. But it's a little more complicated. Now, this guy came from Amazon and, as advertised, is a double throw switch. It's triple pole. Now, for those of you that don't understand what that means, is basically it has three switches. You have a switching circuit here, you have a switching circuit here, and you have a switching circuit here. Each one of those is like an individual switch, and they're all being thrown at the same time. But because of those bands right there, we are connecting the switching action between these six terminals and the switching action between these six terminals. And that, in effect, makes this your common. Just like on a toggle switch, one of these center terminals would be the same as one of these, and your outside terminals would be the same as those two right there. This is the switch that I'm using in my lathe because it is a much higher amperage rating than either of these two switches. I've been inside this switch and the contacts are tiny. I've been inside this switch and the contacts are huge and it makes sense. They're not gonna make the switch that much bigger to put tiny little contacts in it. So going with a switch like this is gonna handle a lot more amps. Let me show you how I wire this up as a direction switch. So let me start by being very, very clear. If you wire this incorrectly, you are gonna blow stuff up. At the very least, you're gonna smoke either your power supply or your motor or your switch, or you're gonna start a fire. I mean, getting this wrong can mess up all kinds of things. So once you have this wired up and you're ready to test it, test it with a multimeter first. Don't just hook it up to your treadmill motor and turn it up to max and go because you're going to ruin stuff. Use this information at your own risk. Not all rotary switches are configured the same way. They're not all set up the same way. And just because it works for this particular switch does not mean that it will work for all rotary type switches. The information I'm about to provide is exclusive to this switch. Believe it or not, it basically wires up the same as a double pole, double throw toggle switch. I've had a lot of questions on my drawings. Sometimes I have the power coming into the middle and exiting here. And sometimes I have the power coming in here and the motor there. And it really doesn't matter. The switch doesn't care which is which. You can have the power supply here and the motor here, or you can put the power supply here and the motor here. That's, that's up to you. That's interchangeable. Because all we're doing is reversing the polarity. I had a hard time finding a double pull, double throw rotary switch. I did find this, which is a triple pole double throw rotary switch. 
And basically, it's like there is a third row. That's, that's all we've done. So when you look at a diagram like this or the back of a double pull, double throw switch, these three terminals in line are basically a switch. These three terminals in line are basically a switch. And they're just being thrown at the exact same time. Nothing is different on this rotary switch. We have three individual switches. So you've got one there, one there, and one there. And all three of those switches are being switched by turning the knob on the front. On a toggle type switch, you have what I refer to as the common pole. So that's this pole here in the middle. That is what is being switched. We're either connecting this one to this one, or we're connecting this one to this one. And the same is true on the other side. We're connecting this one to this one, or we're connecting this one to this one. Now, if you look at that and you think about that for a minute, when the switch is thrown so that we're connecting this to this and this to this, we're turning red into black and we're turning black into red. And that's why the motor goes backwards. When we're connecting this to this and this to this, red is still red, black is still black, and it goes in the direction intended. So on this rotary switch, as we said, this is a triple pole double throw. So we don't even have to worry about this last set of terminals. All we need to worry about is this first set on both sides. Now you may look at that and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight terminals there and there's only six terminals here. How is that the same? This terminal and this terminal are strapped together, which means they are effectively the same terminal. And this terminal and this terminal are strapped together, so they are effectively the same terminal. What that means is that this and this is your common. That is like your center terminal on a toggle switch. If we flip it over, that means that this terminal is this terminal, this terminal is this terminal, that terminal is that terminal, and that terminal is that terminal. So all one has to do is make a crossover jumper that goes from here to here, a crossover jumper that goes from here to here, and we can now either connect the motor or the power to these two terminals, and then whichever one we connected to the other side, we connect the opposite one to this side. So if we connected the motor to this one and this one, it's the power that's going to this one and this one, or this one and this one. And that's all there is to it. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.